Greetings and good health to you out there during this difficult time of COVID and welcome to another issue of Open Up with myself, Salo Makekanyube. As always, we start with nuggets of wisdom. And our nuggets of wisdom today, we get them from Cheryl Sandberg. And she writes, leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. Uh, my guest today is a gentleman who exactly did that, who made sure that he makes a difference in his presence and that the, the, and the impact of that, you know, basically we will feel it many, many, many years to come. Please well, uh, welcome with me Ntate James Mokoka. Thank you very much. Papa, thank you for acquitting us with your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I, being with you, I'm basically taken to my childhood. And I grew up in Natridgeville between 1966 and 1980. And uh, as a young man, you know, puberty years, you know, I remember, you know, we used to see you with athletes running, I guess, you know, you know, I, I grew up in Kotake Street around the Super Stadium. And I remember, you know, we would watch you coming back from, you know, running from, you know, jogging. And you'll be jogging up to Super Stadium. You know, sometimes I think out of naughtiness, we would actually even come running and following you, you know, with the athletes. And that is I mean, something that is just so imprinted in my mind. And uh, thank you, Papa, because, you know, today sitting here with you, I'm looking forward to reliving part of those memories, but also, you know, working from my you know, Dama. You were born in 1939. And basically, when you become a young, I mean, what, 39, 1948, National Party takes over. Did, during that period, you know, growing at that time, what memories do you have? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, as you all rightfully said, I was born in 1989, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, from a, an area called Drived, uh -huh. uh, near Roybeck Mines in Wombas District. Okay. During that time, uh, sport in the areas was nothing else but soccer, Mm -hmm. Because there were no other facility that you can perhaps associate with. Exactly. And uh, I was not a soccer player. Mm -hmm. um, I started on my own, jogging, running, uh, trying to emulate some of the whites who were in that very, who were around at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I said to myself, it is nothing else. But the color that makes me different from them, mm -hmm. I am what they are. Uh, yes. And what they can achieve, I can achieve. Gee, exactly. That itself makes the point that uh, I, should, I, I should grow into loving sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, you know, we weren't so much knowledgeable about which party was winning, which party was ruling and so on. Yes, yes. We were doing nothing else but which we did exactly what we thought mm -hmm. we could do for our people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that of course threw me into nothing else sports in my primary schools. And then when I went to the secondary schools, high schools, this is when now I realized that the uh, uh, sports is there for everyone. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, my high school was at the school called Sekita in Matibia Stad. Mm -hmm. Their sports was nothing else but soccer. Mm -hmm. I was there only for one year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from there I went to a place called 
Mokomene, Mokomene, yes. right up in Sukmekar. Yes, yes. It's where now I realized there were other sports coach which I could participate in. Mm-hmm. It's where I realized that um, uh, my interest in sports yes. was murder where it was coming up and so on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we used to have what we call inter-colleges competitions and so on. Mm-hmm. And I used to participate. Mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. at one stage when I represented what used to be called the Northern Zone. Mm-hmm. Northern Zone, you know, coming from Petersburg, Retrihat and, and the like. Uh-huh. I was in the Northern Zone team. Mm-hmm. And then we competed. I came for the first time at Bolegua Stadium. In Atchville. In Atchville. Okay. So there I was running 200 meters. And my cousin was coming from Emerentia. Mm-hmm. He was representing Central Zone. Mm-hmm. And then it's then that I realized that the uh, uh, sports, which is athletics, was in me. Uh-huh. And then from there, athletics still remained in me for many, many years. And then until, of course, I went to a teacher training college uh, at Mukopani. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then when after Mukopani, around which year is that? Um, Mukopani, when... I did my teacher training uh, 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 course in 1960 to 62. Okay. And okay. during that time is then that I realized that the facilities were made available. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I take it uh, the principal of school, so a man interested in sports in me mm-hmm. and I was made in charge I was put in charge of uh, sports equipment right I right. was uh, in charge of deciding which sports code to pa- students should participate in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what equipment had to be bought and so on. that sort of boiled in me mm-hmm. it made me realize that now there is something that the school uh, says in me mm-hmm. and then I'm getting more and more interested uh, in different sports code. I used to train mm-hmm. uh, even the girls basketball. I used to play in softball. I used, you know, mm-hmm. I participated in all, all the, the sports codes. All sports code. And so mm-hmm. knowing that my main sport was athletics. Uh-huh. I realized that uh, people need to be coached. People need mm-hmm. to be trained in order to, to, to participate to their best in that particular sport. As you say this, I'm reminded also of just of my schooling days. And but also and since you are also a teacher. At that time, you know, I remember I mean from sub A, whatever thing, especially standard six, you know, you only had one teacher in the class. You know, and the teacher will teach you everything. And teachers were versatile in can, can Yes. Yes, as I say from Mukopani Training mm-hmm. College, I went and taught in Soweto. Okay. At a school called Taupedi. Okay. There I would do exactly what we have been saying. Mm-hmm. Doing, teaching all the subject. Right. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, uh, being in charge of any sports code that was available at that mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. And I must tell you, um, my school did very, very well. Mm-hmm. To an extent that at Taupedi, I sort of formed a club called Soweto Hearts. Uh-huh. This athletic club was formed uh, from the students, the people who were participating during the inter schools competition, right. including the, the, the children mm-hmm. from their surrounding areas. Okay. So a very strong club called Soweto Hearts mm-hmm. uh, emerged. Right. And then from there it participated. And at that time, I think I must mention that mm-hmm. we didn't have athletic clubs mm-hmm. in the township. No, no. Mm. And then as such, there was no an umbrella body which could perhaps help mm-hmm. to the, the the formation of clubs. Mm-hmm. So this Mo- Soweto has a little club affiliated to what we call, what used to be called Central Transvaal. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Central Transvaal used to be the province uh, affiliated to a body called the South African Amateur Athletics and Cycling Federation for the Black People. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. most of the participants or most of the clubs that were affiliated to this body mm-hmm. were from the mines. Okay, okay. I must mention that the mines played a major role as far as athletic sports is concerned. Wow. Because mm-hmm. uh, when when the mines used to participate have mm-hmm. their own inter-mines competition, right. this Soweto Athletics Club 
because it was affiliated to Central Transfer, mm -hmm. used to be allowed to participate right, right. Uh, during these competitions. Mm -hmm. And this is where now I, dis I discovered quite a number of athletes who didn't know that they could do their best as far as athletics concerned. Mm -hmm. And at this very central Transvaal, that's where I met an athlete like Binoni Malaga. Okay. I think you remember the late mm -hmm. Binoni Malaga used to work on the mines and so on. Mm -hmm. I, met them, I met him there. Right. And yeah. he used to take very, very keen interest in the athletes coming from the townships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They used to help us even with the transport when we had to go and compete at other mines. And yes, so on. yes. They used to help us also with the clothings and so on for the athletes to wear whenever they were running. Mm -hmm. So, athlete, athlete now became a, a focal point for me. Right. I sort of now try to specialize in athletics. I sort of moved away from other sports. Sports, exactly. Yes. Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. I participated in sports. Mm -hmm. And in a year's time, I left the school, Taupedi. Mm -hmm. I was recruited by the City Council of Johannesburg right. as a sports organizer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now as a sports organizer, there you have to participate. You have to try and participate and help in all sports of coming exactly. to what you said when mm -hmm. you started, that uh, one had to try, uh, we were trying to train mm. and produce other coaches, other mm. trainers, because you know, you couldn't do everything alone. Exactly, yes, so yes. So mm. that came into me because uh, as, a, as a sports uh, organizer, uh, we were organizing school sports. Yes, yes. And here you used to identify teachers from other schools right. who were interested mm. in sports mm -hmm. and we used to train them in as one of our, our programs with the City Council of okay. Johannesburg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there, I must say, one point that I, uh, I feel I must emphasize, mm. It was, it was during that time when there was that myth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that girls or women yes. shall not participate or should not participate in heavy programs as far as at least sports is concerned because there was this saying that uh, they are going to have very tough legs yes. uh, which are going to look like men yes, yes. and uh, that uh, they will not bear children. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you that these programs prove them wrong. Wrong, exactly. That yes. uh, as I can tell you right now, some most of the athletes that I train up to the time when I met Rosina Silvani so, yes. are mothers. They've got children, exactly. they've got grandchildren, mm -hmm. and they look even more beautiful. They used to look more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sports used to train their figure. They used to look well. And, <laughs> exactly, so yes. and I must tell you, mm -hmm. when I left Soweto, right. I was also recruited mm -hmm. by the body called the Sports Foundation of South Africa. Right. Where my task was to, 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 to produce leaders mm. in sports, uh -huh. leaders in athletics. And that entailed what? what, what that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, entailed getting to, to teacher training colleges throughout South Africa up to Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. Getting to the teacher training colleges, those who had to become teachers had to be trained mm -hmm. as coaches, as technical officials, as administrators as in athletics. Mm -hmm. I realized that there was a lot that, that was required. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I must, re I must make mention that um, when I joined the Sports Foundation of South Africa, uh, I moved from Soweto to Pretoria. Pretoria yes. And now, this is where now I started forming a club when one of the members was Rosina Sidibani. Right, yes. We formed the club called Atridgeville Athletics Club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here, I must say, I was very much particular. Mm -hmm. Because now here is where I wanted to prove to, the, to South Africa mm -hmm. that our, our girls are as good as anybody. But yes. And then, I must say, Quite a number of athletes in Atridgeville wanted to join, but I stopped them mm -hmm. because I didn't want my program of producing girls. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to show South Africa that our girls are as good as anybody what else. else. Yes. And then we, at one stage, the man, the, the boy who at least managed to penetrate to be in our club 
mm-hmm. was, it was uh, Sidney Murray. Right, yes. Sidney yes. Murray joined the club after I was requested by the school Flagfontein Technical College. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. said, could you help him? Yes. Then I didn't want to take him like Flagfontein, you exactly, know? <laughs> yes. exactly. okay. So mm-hmm. Sidney Murray mm-hmm. joined this club comprising of girls only. Wow. <laughs> I must say it was girls only because I wanted to prove to everyone One that is. our girls are as good as anybody. Mm-hmm. So I exposed them to scientific training programs. That is why when I used to go out to go and run courses throughout mm-hmm. the country, yep. I would take these girls, mm-hmm. I selected five of them mm-hmm. to go with. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, for example, if you get to uh, Polukwan, you get to Kwena uh, Moloto Training College, for example. Yes, yes. Mm. During the course of the day, I am training the teachers. These students, this athlete of Mandrosina City, yeah. mm-hmm. will now go and join classes at that particular school wow. during the course of the day. Mm-hmm. During mm-hmm. the course of the day, I am training, uh, producing the leaders. And in the afternoon, those athletes, Rosina Sibari, and others would come and join for practical demonstrations. Wow. Because when I was telling people what could be done about, uh, as far as sports is concerned by girls, mm-hmm. I knew very few would believe me. Mm-hmm. Then I took those girls as my tools. Exactly, yes. Now, when I say we're going to do training programs, speed training, mm. speed strength, and stamina, stamina. yes. They will, they will be demonstrated Treating, upon exactly, yeah. by these girls. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think there was any other way that I could tell the world what mm-hmm. the girls can do, do better yes. than these girls doing it themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And these girls became heroes at every college that used to go there because everybody wanted to see what type of people are they. Are these, they mm-hmm. human beings or are they girls? Yes. I mean, we were told about them and, uh, you know, you know, sometimes I must tell you, they used to train you with, with weights, weight training, girl mm-hmm. training with weights. Yes. Now they said, no, no, you can't do that with girls. Girls can't do weight. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, they used to train with weights. We had the girl, uh, the late uh, uh, Shabangu girl, mm-hmm. Lindy Shabangu, mm-hmm. was the best in weight training, weight lifting and so on, body wow. building. Building, exactly, so, yes. You know, doing building, building their, 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 their arms, their legs by means of weight. It was not bodybuilding but it was weight mm-hmm. training. training yes they were training their body by means of weight Weights, so, exactly yes. so everybody wanted to see these girls wanted to see what type of people they are then i realized that now with these girls then i will be my, i will succeed mm-hmm. in telling the world but, yes. that our athletes are as good, good as anybody hence later on these girls were told were said to be a dream team, team. Because uh, so that was a South African dream team. That's right. Mm. Now, uh, when South Africa had to open sports for everybody, mm-hmm. this I think I must uh, emphasize. When, when when did that happen? Uh, when the, when the year 1994 was was drawing near. Yeah, now, exactly. Yes. I said to myself, we want to show the world that South Africa has long been waiting. Mm. to participate in sport mm-hmm. like any other person sport, yes. and they can do like any other person mm-hmm. I didn't want the world to say look at them yes. here they are, we have opened everything for the, them but the, now they are doing mm-hmm. but I must mention that the mm-hmm. Rusina Sijibani mm-hmm. uh, ran at Pillage Stadium mm-hmm. became the first black girl to win the Northern Transvaal 800 meters mm-hmm. where they were competing with the whites mm-hmm. and that itself when i saw that happening then mm-hmm. i said i think i have reached you have, you have proven, i've proved to the world that yeah. they're as good as anybody the and then Sid, uh, sydney Murray came up also mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. sydney Murray at one stage he was he he attracted universities overseas Jeez, exactly where sydney ultimately left for Villanova to go and mm-hmm. study there. Mm-hmm. And Rosina Sidibane continued bending the tracks. Junior Mutawi and all those other people, mm-hmm. tell you, the minds were very proud because... You know, were, you know, talking about the minds, I'm also even reminded that, you know, there were athletes like Bo Matthews Mutsarate, Lopenfal, 
Lupin Fali used to party was insulated, but they mm -hmm. used to participate during mm -hmm. during Lupin Fali. It's when now South Africa, mm -hmm. it, uh, when it, it was no longer the South African Amateur Athletics and Cycling Federation. That was for the black people. Okay, okay. We were now uh, participate in the present. It was South African Amateur Athletics Union, which okay. ultimately became what it is now, Athletics South Africa. South Africa, exactly. It's yes. when now Matthew Mutsuara mm -hmm. and and, the, and others came. Yeah, okay. And then you know uh, with the money and all those other Yes, people. yes, yes. But uh, what I want to bring about is that now, mm -hmm. I think this point I also want to mention it. Yes. Uh, perhaps the people who are supposed to be responsible listen to me. Mm -hmm. The mines produce the best athletes among the black people. Pinoni Malaga and Humphrey Kosi broke the South Afri the all South African record in 880 yards, beating the whites. Mm -hmm. Mind you, they were running on an ordinary gravel road. Right. And they broke this world, the, the South African record. Mm -hmm. Now, my worry is. I, I, I would be very, very happy yeah. if some of the facilities could be named after these people. Wow. Benoni Malaga mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. a, is a Mami Lodi boy. Yes. Started at Mami Lodi High School. He went to the mine. Mm -hmm. But now he went overseas also. Being a boy from Mami Lodi, I take it at one stage there should have been some facilities that were named after you know, in my life. Like, yes. The same thing as Humphrey Cosi. Yeah. Humphrey Cosi also in the, in the free state and so on. These are some of the people would also like to see them, some of the stadia be made, named after mm -hmm. them. Because these are some of the black people that we are proud of. Who Those who showed, were the, the torch bearers. Who were the torch bearers, that I must tell you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we have got people like um, Tatas Mabolo. Titus Ta Mamabolo. Yes, I remember Titus. Titus I remember Mamabolo. I went he was a long distance runner. That's isn't right. He, mm. he, he held the South African record in, in the 5,000 meters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Titus Mamabolo is still running up to now. Titus Mamabolo is in Limpopo. He's one of those athletes that I think they need to be honored for what they have done to our country, South mm -hmm. Africa, as far as athletics is concerned. And now you can see that uh, we never stood and waited for South Africa to be liberated. Yeah. We continue to so that when gates are open, opened. the world will see that uh, South African blacks have been denied of the opportunity for so long. long yes. And here they are right now. Mm -hmm. They have been better, even better than some of the world. You know, you know, what, you know what, what I found very inspiring for me? If I remember I was listening to SAFM when I had uh, uh, um, Merosina being uh, um, interviewed. And I remember, in fact, even as we were growing, I think Rosina is, I mean, he's two years older than me. I mean, in 1974. That's right. You know, she was 16, I was 14. That's right. You know, and I remember even then, you know, in the town, she was, yo, Kishanaka, you know what I mean? Exactly. And we used to model ourselves around, exactly. you know, around them. You used to go, hero, worship Rosina Sidibo. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, that's exactly what I. If you remember when I started to show everybody that our black women mm -hmm. are good as anybody, yeah. and there's nothing that uh, will, you know, as people used to say, they won't bear children and so on. Yes. Rosina Sidibana has got even grandchildren. Children, exactly, yes. yes. And I take mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm proud that uh, there's a school that I think you know which has been, that named, has been named after, after her, at after least. After Rosina yes. mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So I need more of such facilities Jeez. to be named after the athletes that. Uh, you know, did so well for South Africa, Africa. Mm -hmm. especially the black girls. Mm -hmm. I must mention this black girls because uh, uh, when I was teaching at Daupedi, uh, this way uh, I also had problem in in entering the facilities in town Johannesburg mm -hmm. for the whites. Yeah, and uh, I must tell you, uh, there was and those were the challenges of the times exactly, as well. Uh, Later on, the Sports Foundation of South Africa that employed me, there was a man called Major John Short. Mm -hmm. uh, I took over from when I joined the Sports Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then he was aware of the fact that 
we were denied the privileges of just getting to the stadium to go and see the whites running. Mm. Now he said, you know what I, we should do, uh, James? When you know that there's going to be a competition at, say, a uh, run stadium, mm -hmm. you must get the JM overall, Johannesburg Municipality. But, uh, <laughs> and you should yeah. be the first one to get to enter the gate. People will know that you are going to work in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as you enter the gate, don't go and sit among them. Just sit anywhere where you'll be able wow. to see what everybody it's, else would see. see yeah. That's how I managed to go there, just to go and see, what is to happening? go and copy, mm -hmm. what I could copy so that our athletes could also learn from me mm -hmm. what has been done by, by the whites. Exactly. So, yeah. so you can see a lot had to be done in order to to, 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 uh, to, to break the, the, the barrier. That and to inspire. And, and, to, and, and to inspire others mm. that we can do as much as other as mm. they are doing. So You know what I find amazing is how, you know, I mean, when it was not even fashionable, for instance, for women's rights, you know, we're still even dealing with, you know, human rights, you know, as black people. And then here you find a way, you know, you're almost fighting for women's rights. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I think I should also mention, mm -hmm. the problem that I had with Rosina Sibane, like, it was not easy, I'm mm. sorry, to, to take you back. Yes. Because uh, I used to get sponsorship for track suits and so on. Mm -hmm. they, used, they, they, they at first didn't want to put on track suit. They didn't want to be looked, people, how people, what would people say to us when you've got this, this track suit? So, yes. They would just take track suit and they will only put track suit when they are on the stadium. Wow. And then as soon as they get out of, after running, they would just pull them out. And then, and, 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 and wear dresses. So it took me time mm -hmm. for them to understand that you have to use a track suit. A track suit. We have to use spice. All those things and so on. It mm -hmm. took me time, but I, I was very, you know, patient mm -hmm. to make them understand. Mm -hmm. So that is why at some stages, when... When it was possible yes. to sneak into Pillage Stadium right. for them to go and see the white girls mm -hmm. in drag suit and in, and in take wow. and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, it was not easy I'm yeah, not you, I can to, make to make them understand because mm -hmm. they were also getting other people who were saying, this man is not doing the right that thing. That thing, exactly, yes. And then, you know, I, you know, I, fortunately, there were those who were supporting me mm -hmm. as far as these girls are concerned. Mm -hmm. And I must say, even the parents were very much supportive and so on. I used to go about with them, you know, taking them around mm -hmm. in the Sports Foundation vehicles and so on, mm -hmm. spending weeks and weeks out uh, in either in Natal or Devon, wherever. Yes. At one stage, I took a team of, bl of black athletes complaining, comprising of 40% uh, 40, uh, 40 girls mm -hmm. to Namibia. Wow. To go and show those people that our girls are just good as it's any other good, person yeah. and so on. I won't forget that because even themselves, they will actually tell you that they couldn't just believe it that they are going to be on an airplane because wow. they went on a military plane, plane exactly, to go and yeah. compete against those people. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was a task. Tab, I yes. mm -hmm. It was a very, very mm -hmm. task. Mm -hmm. But uh, up to now, I must tell you, uh, I think uh, I was rewarded by these girls mm -hmm. when they became the dream team. I talked about. You know, what, one thing that I always uh, that I find fascinating also is how, for instance, and uh, I mean, ordinary black people today, we actually don't even have a history of looking back and seeing excellence. Excellent. You know, Excellent. and in different kinds of things. Yeah. And that is why when I saw mm -hmm. the Rosina, because for me, well, I mean, as I said, I want to tell this story, Precise. you know. Precise. And for me, it also just showed that there was nation building even in during difficult times it was it was as i tell you because when i had to take them to the mines they didn't have comfortable accommodation yes they were given any other place to go and sleep as i said as long as they can sleep wake up in the morning to mm. and go and run and right. so on. Mm -hmm. these are some of the difficult times that these girls will tell you mm -hmm. but they never look back Yes. They were never, you know, they were very proud mm -hmm. uh, to be, you know, the mind boys, you know, as I say, this was on the mind, they were so excited yeah. to see girls coming from Soweto, Soweto yeah. uh, coming from Atreville and so exactly, on, yes. coming to run against them. Because on the mind, they were, even the mind, in the mind, the mind mm -hmm. girls used not to run like we, uh, in their competition. The competition mm -hmm. was also, was only and only for 
the mind Mabel makers cus- mean. Meals, exactly. But when I brought the girls from Soweto, oh, yeah, I'll tell you, it opened a lot of gates, I must tell you. This when that even the, the girls from the mines and so on started participating. Mm-hmm. We did a lot of groundbreaking with this very, with mm-hmm. Rosina Sidwani and his uh, dream team. Yes. Yes. Sidney Murray comes and he joins this, you know, dream team. That's right. You know, and then the first race, can you recall it, maybe especially in South Africa? The first race that Sydney ran... In fact, uh, let, let me say, put it this way, that put him on the map, you know. The first race that put him on the map, mm-hmm. it's one he, he had to go and run a mile. They call it Vernon Barnes a Mile at the University of Port Elizabeth. Yes, yes. Sydney had to go and run against a certain Clive Dale. Mm-hmm. Clive Dale was the best at that time. Mm-hmm. It was a South African. For the South African. Mm-hmm. And Sydney had to go down. I took him down together with Rosina City. But I think mm-hmm. that's a, this, I think, must be mentioned. Mm-hmm. Rosina Sidibani, before, whilst we were preparing to get to Port Elizabeth, I remember I took Rosidi, Rosina Sidibani down. Uh, Artisville, as you know, you pass Artisville, go down as if you are getting to Rustenburg. I, go, I took oh, yes, him yes, down. Yes, yes. Mm. I was driving. He was run, She was running on the road. Yes. Oh, and no, no. It no, should be Chest Street. Chest Street. Chest Street. Yes. Street very much. Mm. I was driving. She was running, running on the road. Mm. At one stage, I saw Rosina Sidibani crying. Mm-hmm. Then I said, perhaps the masks are very painful. I wanted to stop him. Mm-hmm. He pushed me aside. Mm-hmm. He said, you said I must run to Super Stadium. Rosina Sidibani ran, cr- ran crying until he reached, she reached Super, Super Stadium. Stadium. The following week, he was had to accompany Sidney Marais to Port Elizabeth to go and run at the Venom Bands Meet Track and Field. Mm-hmm. Rosina Sidibani ran against the best in the 800 meters. Mm-hmm that qualified her to go and run in Pildi Stadium where she became the first black to be crowned as the champion in the 800 meters at Pildi at Northern Transvaal Championship. Now come back to Sydney. Mm-hmm. Sydney was running at, at that uh, 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 Vernon Barnes meeting. Mm-hmm. Sydney had to run against Clive Dale. Mm-hmm. They were running a mile race. Mm-hmm. And Miley, I mean, for, 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 it, 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 it is one, one thousand five hundred oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, This was specifically one mile. Okay. It was one mile. All right. Okay. A, now, Miley, Miley, in today's terms, it what is, it would the be the one thousand five hundred meters was still there. There were those who ran one thousand five hundred meters, but now okay. they were running a mile race. Okay. If perhaps you remember, at some stages there used to be a mile race in the city of Pretoria. Yes. Yes. They used mm-hmm. to run. Mm-hmm along the street in town and so on. Mm-hmm. It was a mile race. Race, yes, yes. It was not a 1,500, it was a mile, mile race. Okay. Now, okay. they were running a mile race mm-hmm. at Stellenbosch. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, by Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth. Yes. He was running against Live Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sydney was running neck to neck against Live Day. Mm-hmm. And when they went for the last lap, mm-hmm. Sydney accelerated. And at one stage, when he was left with about 150 meters, mm-hmm. as they were, the commentator was calling his name, Sydney at one stage said he saw his shadow, because it was in the evening. Yes. He saw his shadow. Uh-huh. He thought it was Clive Dale. Dave. <laughs> now, he was running away from Clive okay. Dale. Yes. Running against this shade, uh, which was Clive Dale. Dave, yeah. And that made him to run even faster. <laughs> and at the, after crossing the finishing line, mm. he realized Clive Dale was far <laughs> much behind because he was running against it himself. Now, that race is the race that opened mm-hmm. his gate to get... To Villa, Villa, Philadelphia, Villa, yeah. Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Sydney, from there, was, you know, there were quite a number of universities overseas that wanted Sydney to come in red. Now, at that time, 
the, the universities in the states were um, sort of uh, taking the athletes from Africa, mm -hmm. make them run, and as soon as you have finished running, you are no longer running well, mm -hmm. they would throw you back. Mm -hmm. So there were some rules that now, first of all, the athletes must choose the university where you want to get to. Right. Secondly, they want the academic result quarterly. How the athletes who was recruited from South Africa is running mm -hmm. at the universities and so on. Wow. Because this was not doing well and so on, they would pull you out of that university to go and compete, at, uh, to go and attend to another university. Yeah. So Sydney did very, very well at this, at, at this very university. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a time when now you remember apartheid mm. was nearer coming to be broken to, to down. To an end, yes, yes. And I must tell you, when apartheid had to be broken into, and at least South Africa was now coming together, they were both black and white, mm. I was labeled mm -hmm. as a man who took Sydney to go and compete overseas when other blacks were fighting apartheid in South Africa. But I said, Sydney fought apartheid overseas. Jeez. He showed those overseas that I am black from South Africa, mm. and he broke several records of that university. I said apartheid, mm. we fought it on in different ways. Different ways. Some mm. because culturally as well, yes, the way we, the, 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 we fought it in different ways and so mm, on. Mm, because mm. Sydney, I remember at one stage, Sydney had to run in in some of the meetings that were uh, they used to. Be, they used to be called by, by names, this top competition. Mm -hmm. So Sydney invited me, sent me an air ticket to go and, come, to go and see him run in Rome. Uh -huh. Sydney won the 1500 meters at that very competition. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. during the interview after the race, they wanted to find out f from Sydney, what made you to run so fast? What made you to win in this race? Mm -hmm. He said, because my coach from South Africa is here. That made me feel very, very it, proud. Yeah. He said, it is through him that I won the race. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that itself can show you that yeah. you know, there were people who were fighting about apartheid. Mm -hmm. And, and then basically put South Africa on the map. And put South Africa on the map. Because Sydney wouldn't hide any time when he's interviewed that mm -hmm. was from South Africa. Yes. Hey, he didn't want to say, well, I am a black American, so on. Mm. He said from South Africa. Mm. So you can see we fought apartheid in many, many ways. Many but what, 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 when was the years of Sydney being in, in, in the States? Sydney was there in the, as the years from 1970, 70, he went in 1976, from mm. 1976 for mm -hmm. about eight years. Eight years, yes, 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 yes. Because I mean, I remember very well when I was doing my matric or technical, That's right. he had already left. Had already left. You know, I mean, we were just living, you know, mm -hmm. under his shadow, you know, and his legacy. Exactly. Ndate Mukoka, your time, I know, you know, the story, I mean, we could talk, but we are going to have this conversation again, you know, and to try and recap this whole journey that you have traveled, which I remember as a young boy, you know, and I was saying that we used to, when I mean, Rosina running to the state, to Super Stadium, you know, we used to come, you know, be running behind. You know, I wanted to, to us to talk about Uncle Chunky as well. We never got to talk about That's that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, those, those are the people who also remember. Mm -hmm. I would like to say I build this athletics in Artichville alone. There alone, people, exactly, yes. There were people who were supportive. As you say, I'm sorry, I didn't mention Uncle Charlie. Chunky, Uncle yes. Charlie is one of those. Mm. He was a sports organizer in Artichville. He yes. was one of those mm -hmm. who used to tell other athletes mm. from other schools to mm. emulate this is Rosina City. Ben, Ben, exactly. Yeah. And I should also mention the name of uh, 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 Kenneth Lebet, the late Kenneth Lebet. Exactly. Because yeah. he used to write about these girls. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And these are some of the people that I should say they sort of also helped mm -hmm. uh, to promote athletics, not only in Artridge, yeah. yeah. because they promoted athletics in South Africa for the black people through athletes coming from Artridge. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very time. much. Thank you. I hope perhaps this will be able to tell other people yes. where athletics, as far as black people, comes from. No, we are especially to, mm, the women, especially yeah, the girls. Exactly. Thank you very much. No, but thank you. This is just we can we just laid the foundation. Thank you. But thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly. Well, you have it. We come a long way, and fighting for women's rights happen even right in the middle of the party rule. Well, this is me, Selo Makikanube, saying toodaloo, arrivederci, bye-bye, salangawotsi.